All right, welcome back. Uh, in this segment, I'm going to explain the tradition that St. Joseph, as well as the Virgin Mary, uh, made a vow of virginity and was a perpetual virgin his whole life, as well as the Virgin Mary. Uh, St. Joseph, as well as the Virgin Mary, remained a pure virgin his whole life, and that's been the tradition of the church from early Christian testimonies. In the book of Numbers in chapter 30, the Lord gives instructions to Moses about one or more, uh, one or both spouses that have taken vows of abstinence. So there's actually instructions on uh, what to do within the context of a marriage for either a spouse that has uh, taken a vow of virginity or abstinence or both spouses. Stay tuned and I'll review that later on in this segment. Very powerful. Now uh, here's St. Jerome. Uh, St. Jerome defended not only the perpetual virginity of the Virgin Mary, but St. Joseph as well. A common error which prompted me to do this segment is that St. Joseph had other children through another marriage. No, no, no. This is a false teaching that may have originated from apocryphal writings. This error that St. Joseph had children from a previous marriage is a false explanation, which some the theologians, I even heard a priest one time, defend Mary's perpetual virginity by trying to explain these brothers of the Lord that are found in Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, as being the offspring or the sons of St. Joseph. That's a false explanation used to defend the perpetual virginity of the Virgin Mary, because when you use that, you're desecrating St. Joseph's perpetual virginity, which has been a tradition and a teaching of the church from early Christians, early Christian testimony, which I'll share with you in this segment. This error that St. Joseph had children from a previous marriage is a false explanation to defend Mary's virginity. Don't use that one. It's a false exp explanation. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, uh, this verse has been misinterpreted and used to attack the Virgin Mary by anti-Catholics. And I'll touch base on this verse. So let me show you the board here, okay? So at the top I have St. Joseph, who I will explain in this segment, was a celibate male virgin his whole life, and he was the husband and is the husband of the Virgin Mary. Matthew chapter 13, verse 55 mentions James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas as brothers of the Lord. I'll use a couple other scripture verses to trace who these individuals are. And I'll show you in this segment that they can be traced to another Mary who was actually next to the Virgin Mary at the cross at Calvary, and that'll be described in Mark chapter 15, verse 40, and John chapter 9, verse 19, verse 25. I'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, Saint Joseph, Jesus, and Saint John were all celibate male virgins, and all three cared for the Virgin Mary during her life. The word brothers, okay, which is uh, found in uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Uh, this word in Aramaic is ach. There's no word for cousin in the Aramaic language. The, this word ach uh, is actually used for kinsman, relative, cousin. It's not always meant to be a literal blood brother. So when you take ach and then you translate it to Greek, that's how it looks in Greek, and then you take that word and then you translate it into English then we have brother but brother if you take it back in the Aramaic language that Jesus spoke can refer to a kinsman a nephew a relative um, somebody that's not a literal blood brother only Jesus is mentioned in Scripture as the son of Mary so uh, James Joseph Simon and Judas are not mentioned as the sons of Mary anywhere in the Bible. 
So here's the verse, Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters with us? So the individuals making this remark note, note that they were the ones that did not accept Jesus. They were the ones that were rejecting Jesus. The ones that made this comment that's described in Matthew chapter 13 verse 55. If you look at the verse closely, you'll notice that only Mary in this verse is mentioned as Jesus' mother. So, just to rephrase it, is not his mother named Mary? Speaking of Jesus, is not his mother named Mary? And his brothers named James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. So James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas are not mentioned as uh, Mary being their mother. Only Jesus is described as being the son of Mary in the Bible. This verse does not say that Mary is the mother of uh, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. It does not say that in the verse. The brothers mentioned in Matthew chapter 13 verse 55 can actually be traced to another Mary, the wife of Clopas, in John chapter 19 verse 25. Clopas up here is the brother of Saint Joseph. We get that from early Christian testimony which I'll touch base on in this segment. Clopas is all also spelled Cleopas and also Alpheus in Scripture. That's the same person. There's an Aramaic name and there, there's a Greek name. So there, it's both the same person, just like we have Saul and Paul. It's the same person. Uh, James, called James the Less, is described as the son of Alpheus in Mark chapter 3, verse 18. So James listed right here, is described as the son of uh, Clopas, or Alpheus, in Mark chapter 3, verse 18. So look that up, and it'll, it'll mention that James is the son of Alpheus. And we'll trace Alpheus as being the husband of the other Mary, who was next to the Virgin Mary at the cross in Calvary. Scholars believe that Alpheus is the same man called Clopas, the husband of the other Mary, mentioned in Scripture at the foot of the cross in John chapter 19, verse 25. Clopas, Cleopas, or Alpheus is actually the brother of St. Joseph, according to the Greek historian Eusebius. So Eusebius, there's a, uh, some writings from Eusebius, who was an early Greek Christian Historian Eusebius of Caesarea relates in his church history, it's book number 3, chapter 11, that, quote, Hegesi Pepius records that Cle Clopas was a brother of Joseph and an uncle of Jesus. So here's an early Christian writer recording that Clopas, or Cleopas, was a brother of St. Joseph and an uncle of Jesus. Epipanius adds that Joseph and Cleopas were brothers, sons of Jacob, who was surnamed Panther. So Jacob was the father of Joseph and Clopas, or Cleopas or Alpheus. Same brother, same person. St. Cleopas is one of the disciples who met the risen Lord on the road to Emmaus. So in Luke chapter 24, verse 18, uh, the Bible mentions Clopas, and I'll read to you the verse. Quote, one of them named Cleopas, also referred to as Clopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have been taken place in these days? That's when Jesus, they didn't recognize Jesus when he was walking with them on the way to Emmaus. There is an early Christian tradition that identifies this Cleopas, or Clopas, as the husband of the other Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, 
and Salome. This would make Saint Cleopas the father of Saint Jude. How do we know that? Because Saint Jude mentions himself as the brother of James, so Judas, uh, all, also known as Jude. The reason why uh, Saint Jude, uh, we, we refer to him as Jude, is because of the disciple that betrayed the Lord. So that's the more common uh, reference, or the co more common name used for Jude. Not the one who betrayed Jesus, but Saint Jude, the author of the epistle of Jude. Here's Jude chapter 1, verse 1. Here's St. Jude, quote, Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ and brother of James. So here St. Jude does not call himself the brother of Jesus. He actually says, refers to himself as a slave of Jesus Christ, but he does refer to himself as the brother of James in Jude chapter 1, verse 1. According to a tradition, after the crucifixion of our Lord, Cleopas, the brother of St. Joseph, decided to return home to Emmaus, where he and his companion met his Lord on the way. Cleopas, according to St. Jerome, was one of the seventy disciples and was slain in Emmaus because of Jesus. Roman Martyrology has September 25th as St. Cleopas' birthday. The disciple of Christ, who was said to have been slain by the Jews for confessing the faith in the very house in which he entertained the Lord. So, the very house in Emmaus that Jesus revealed himself to Clopas and the other disciple in the breaking of the bread is the very house that is said to have been where uh, St. Cleopas or Clopas was slain for the faith, for a testimony to our Lord. James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas are the sons of the brother of St. Joseph and another woman named Mary and are not the sons of St. Joseph from a prior marriage. That is a false explanation. The brothers mentioned in Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, are the cousins or kinsmen of Jesus, not literal blood brothers. In the Aramaic, Aramaic language, there is no word for cousin. Remember, the word in Aramaic, ach, oh, that word can mean kinsman, relative, or, 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 or brother in the Aramaic language. Remember, we're reading from an English translation of Scripture, not Aramaic. Let me give you an example. In Acts chapter 1, verse 15, here's another uh, explanation of the, of the word brother, or brothers being used that doesn't mean literal blood brother. During those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers, in Acts chapter 1, verse 15. The verse says, there was a group of about 120 persons in one place. He said, my brothers. So Peter addresses the crowd of 120 men as my brothers. Does this mean that they are literally St. Peter's blood brothers? No. He just refers to this group of men as his brothers. It's not meant to be interpreted literally. Another example can be found in Genesis chapter 14, verse 12, where Lot, who is Abram's nephew, is described as Abram's brother. So if you go to Genesis chapter 14, verse 12, the Bible says they took Lot, Abram's brother's son. That would make him his nephew. But if you go to Genesis chapter 14, verse 14, Two verses later, the Bible calls Lot Abram's brother. The Bible says, and when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive. So here, this English translation of Genesis chapter 14, verse 14, calls Lot Abram's brother. And we know that Lot is Abram's nephew. Go ahead and read verse 16. And it also repeats the same thing, calls Lot Abram's brother when 
we know that Lot is Abram's nephew. Matthew chapter 13 verse 55 has been misinterpreted by those who are not familiar with the language Jesus spoke. For the uneducated, it is easy to misinterpret scripture. St. Peter warns us about misinterpreting the Bible or those who misinterpret the Bible in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 16. Here's what St. Peter warns us about, quote, In them there are some things hard to understand, that the ignorant and unstable distort to their own destruction, just as they do the other scriptures. Many of those that attack the perpetual virginity of Mary and Joseph read only an English translation of the Bible. They only read English and only understand English and are not familiar with the language or culture that Jesus lived in. Some apocryphal books do assert that those who are called the brothers and sisters of Jesus were the children of St. Joseph by a previous marriage, which has led some to use this as that false explanation to defend the perpetual virginity of the Virgin Mary. But why would you use an apocryphal book? This is why these books are called spurious. They're false writings and are not inspired scripture and should never be used to explain Christian doctrine authoritatively. It has no weight. It's not God-breathed inspired scripture. Only our canon of scripture is God-breathed, inspired, infallible. The brothers of James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas can be traced to another Mary by simply looking at a few Bible verses, starting in Matthew chapter 27, verse 56. Here's a description of who was at the cross at Calvary. Quote, Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. So there's another Mary at Calvary who was the mother of James and Joseph, not Jesus' mother. There's another Mary who was the mother of James and Joseph. This verse mentions another Mary as the mother of James and Joseph who are called the brothers of the Lord in Matthew chapter 13 verse 55 which has been misinterpreted by many anti-Catholics who attack the Virgin Mary and her perpetual virginity. Who is this other Mary? that the Bible calls the mother of James and Joseph. Well, let's read another verse. If you go to Mark chapter 15, verse 40, the Bible says, quote, describing Calvary, who is at Calvary, among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph and Salome. Now let's go to the Gospel of John, John chapter 19, verse 25. Quote, standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas. Who's Clopas? The brother of St. Joseph, which would make these other individuals relatives of Jesus, not his blood brothers. This verse also mentions that Mary had a sister named Mary, but it's unlikely that the Virgin Mary had a sister with her same name. That would be unusual. So since there's no word for sister in, in Hebrew or Aramaic, this sister of the Virgin Mary must have been a relative, not a literal blood sister of the Virgin Mary. The other Mary, called the sister of the Virgin Mary, can be traced to being the wife of the brother of St. Joseph, Clopas. Take for example, if Jesus had blood brothers born of his mother, okay, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, okay, why would he, the responsibility, I should rephrase it, the responsibility to take care of Mary after Jesus was crucified would fall upon those blood brothers. It would fall upon the offspring of the mother to take care of a mother who had lost a son or was a widow. That was a, that's Jewish culture. 
it would not be permissible for a non-relative to take care of a mother you know, that had children. The offspring would have to take care of their mother in Jewish culture. So when Jesus says to John, his disciple, who was not a blood relative, uh, he says in uh, John chapter 19, verse 26 and 27, he says, and this is one of my favorite verses, here's what the Bible says, quote, When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. So the disciple, uh, John, took care of Mary. Why? Because James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas were not the sons of Mary, were not Jesus' little literal blood brothers. The responsibility was not theirs to take care of her. And Jesus wanted her to be taken care of by a celibate, pure male virgin. Just as Jesus was a celibate male virgin, and so was St. Joseph. Holy people. It would be unacceptable for a widow to be taken care of by an unrelated individual such as St. John the Apostle if James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas were the sons of Mary or the sons of St. Joseph from a previous marriage. No, no, no. Jesus entrusted the care of Mary to the Apostle John who was an unrelated celibate male virgin. St. Joseph, Jesus, and St. John were all celibate, holy male virgins. All three celibate male virgins took care of the Virgin Mary during her life. As early as the 3rd century, St. Athanasius spoke and wrote about the virginity of Mary and St. Joseph. Here's a quote from St. Athanasius. Quote, both remained intact, as was proved by many testimonies. So St. Athanasius, when he made that statement, had many testimonies about the perpetual virginity of both the Virgin Mary and St. Joseph. It was common knowledge in the early church. The perpetual virginity of Mary and St. Joseph was common knowledge and oral tradition in the early church by many testimonies from early Christians. St. Jerome, defending the perpetual virginity of Mary against the heretic Helvidius, maintained that not only Mary, but her spouse, St. Joseph, was ever a virgin so that of this virginal marriage, a virginal son could be born and raised and taken care of. St. Peter Christologus and many doctors of the church were of the opinion that St. Joseph was to imitate the holiness of our eternal Father in heaven. After all, are not angels, virgins for example, to whom is committed the care of the world and men? Should not St. Joseph, to whom was committed the care and custody of Jesus and Mary, far excel that of even the angels? Tradition holds that both Mary and Joseph had taken vows of abstinence prior to their marriage. This is why Mary asked the archangel in Luke chapter 1, verse 34. Here's the verse, quote, how shall this be, since I have no relations to a man? Mary never doubted the archangel Gabriel, as Zechariah did. She was just wondering how it could be done since she had taken a vow of virginity and was a virgin. If Mary was to have relations with Joseph after they were married, she would not have even asked this question. She wouldn't have been worried about that. But Mary never questioned if she could have a child, but simply how she could have a child since she had taken a vow to remain a pure virgin. The marriage of Joseph and Mary was a match made by divine 
predestination, since they had both taken vows of virginity prior to their marriage, according to early Christian tradition. Many saints have written about that. Old Testament scripture does give instruction to a husband or a wife or both who have taken a vow to the Lord under oath to a pledge of abstinence. Yet this can be found in the book of Numbers chapter 30. Let me break this open to you. In Numbers chapter 30 it talks about a couple or a, a, a uh, a, a wife or a husband that has taken a vow of abstinence in, in their marriage or prior to their marriage. Let me break open God's word to you. It's right here in the Bible. Numbers chapter 30, I'll start at verse 1. Bo Moses then gave the Israelites these instructions just as the Lord had ordered him. Moses said to the heads of the Israelite tribes, This is what the Lord has commanded. When a man makes a vow to the Lord or binds himself under oath to a pledge of abstinence, he shall not violate his word, but must fulfill exactly the promise he has uttered. Tradition says that St. Joseph had made this vow of abstinence prior to even marrying the Virgin Mary. Remember, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 19, the Bible describes Joseph as a just or righteous man, a holy man. If we go to Numbers chapter 30, verse 7, here's a verse speaking about the woman in the marriage. Quote, If she marries under a vow, tradition states that has said, and many saints have said that Mary made a vow of virginity prior to her betrothal or her engagement to St. Joseph, and he was aware of that. And they both knew that each other had taken these vows prior to their, themselves being married. But let me continue. If she marries while well, under a vow or under a rash pledge to which she bound herself, and her husband learns of it, yet says nothing to her that day about it, then the vow or pledge she had made remains valid. But if on the day he learns of it, her husband expresses to her his disapproval, he thereby annuls the vow which she had made, or the rash pledge to which she had bound herself, and the Lord releases her from it. But we know that St. Joseph was a just man, and when he learned of her having a vow of virginity, it he was relieved because he had made the same vow himself, tradition holds, or states, or is handed down to us. Verse 11, if it is in her husband's house that she makes a vow or binds herself under oath to pledge and her husband learns of it, yet says nothing to express to her his disapproval, then any vow or any pledge she has made remains valid. So, we're reading an English translation. Now, in an English translation in, in Luke, you know, in Luke it talks about that when Joseph what we learned that Mary was pregnant, he decided to divorce her silently. I spoke about this in another segment. That's an English translation. The word actually is demetet in Greek. It does not mean divorce. That when they translated it into English, they gave us a bad word, divorce. Saint Joseph had no intention of divorcing Mary. He learned that she was pregnant, he knew she was a holy virgin, and he was well aware of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, which prophesies that the Messiah would be born of a, a virgin. And when he was aware that she was pregnant, he, he put two and two together and realized that he had married the mother of the Messiah, and he did not feel he was worthy, so he wanted to just separate himself for a time to leave because he felt he was not worthy. And that's when the angel Gabriel appears to him in the dream and says, don't be afraid to have her as your wife and to take her under your home, and under your roof. He, gave, he received encouragement from the archangel. Verse 14, any vow or any pledge that she makes under oath to mortify herself, this is from Numbers chapter 30, her husband can either allow to remain valid or render null and void. 
But if her husband day after day says nothing at all to her about them, he thereby allows as valid any vow or any pledge she has made. He has allowed them to remain valid because on the day he learned of them, he said nothing to her about them. Verse 17, these are the statutes which the Lord prescribed through Moses concerning the relationship between a husband and his wife. A married couple that had a vow of abstinence, a vow of virginity, either the, the female or the male or both spouses. Saints have also interpreted Matthew chapter 1 verse 19 which describes Saint Joseph as a righteous or just man as also an indication that Saint Joseph was a virgin pure person, a pure male. Ancient oral tradition teaches that Saint Joseph as well as the Virgin Mary remained virgins throughout their lives. If the Son of God Jesus Christ was to be a celibate, sinless, all holy male, what better examples to have but being raised by celibate, holy parents? Imagine how holy the house was they lived in. Where did St. Joseph derive the love of virginity from? No doubt, St. Joseph was endowed with grace, which God bestowed on him that he might be a worthy companion of the Queen of Virgins, the Virgin Mary. From the beginning of Christianity, Mary received the title Virgin Mary. The earliest Christians gave Mary the title Virgin Mary, which they never would have done if they did not believe and teach and know that Mary was ever virgin, always a pure virgin. They would not have given her this title if she had other offspring or other children. The Virgin Mary is the spotless pure ark of the New Covenant. Saint Joseph was predestined to be the guardian of the Virgin Mary the pure ark, the ark of the new covenant. Let us ask Saint Joseph to obtain for us that purity of heart to live a pure and blameless life on earth, that we may behold the face of God along with him in heaven. For as Christ taught us, only the clean of heart shall see God. In conclusion, Saint Joseph did not have children through a previous marriage. This violates the early tradition of the church and the teaching that Saint Joseph as well as the Virgin Mary were ever virgins their whole life. Thank you for joining me in this segment. Look forward to bringing you more information next time. God bless and peace be with you.